Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. It's good to see each of you this morning. I want to go over a few quick announcements this morning. If you didn't get a newsletter, make sure you grab one on your way out. The, we've got a couple of uh, gospel singings came, coming up, and one is this Saturday, this Saturday in Kanawha at, on August 3rd, 7 p.m. Veterans Park there in Kanawha. The annual, this is the 60th annual Kanawha Gospel Singing, by the way. So it's been going on for 60 years. You know, I know many of you might remember years ago, it was an all-night singing. It is not anymore, <laughs> but it was, uh, it's good. We go seven to whenever we're finished. So uh, usually finished up around maybe 10, 11, kind of depends on the evening, but somewhere in there, bring a lawn chair. Um, there'll be concessions available, of course. The Kingsmen will be there with us this year, as well as the Williamsons. Also, also the Inspirationals, Kevin Spencer will be back. Um, I think the Russells might be showing up. Russells, y'all going to be there this week? Okay. I, I've heard uh, another group, some of y'all might know, Southern Sunlight will be there. Uh, Mary Faye is going to be there as well. I think I'm leaving somebody out. Anyway, come. Just come, and you'll see who's all there, because they're all the people that you love. So, <laughs> 7 o'clock. It's free. You can just bring a lawn chair and enjoy that. Now, on August the 31st, um, at the end of August, um, we'll be at the Henrietta First Baptist Church, and that is the annual Labor Day Gospel Singing. The Williamsons will be back for that one, and that's going to be indoors in the First Baptist Church there. And we'll be there. Donna will be there. Brandon uh, and Chris Hester. Um, we haven't heard. We haven't seen Chris in a while, but he's going to be there. I think he's got some new music. We've been playing a lot of his new songs on the gospel station so make sure to mark that down again it's also a free concert just bring a love offering if you can and be a part of that okay uh any other announcements this morning that we might need to make very quickly all right let's see who has a birthday today anybody with a birthday birthdays or anniversaries today any birthdays any anniversaries nobody Oh, here comes one. Reluctant. You were getting pushed out of that chair, weren't you? She was like, get out of here. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's stand. We're going to sing happy birthday this morning. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Let's remain standing and let's sing together. Great and mighty is the Lord our God.
again. Sing that through again. Oh, Jesus, 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 there's just something about that day. Master, Master Savior. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. On the crowded streets, all the people that I see want them to know the Jesus that I know. If I'm the closest thing to a Bible that they read, let the words they read be what you wrote. Father, help me to grow. I'll be a garden in Manhattan, be a river where it's dry. When my friends can't find the road, I'll be a roadside welcome sign. Sunshine in Seattle, be a cool breeze in July, light in the darkness. I'll be a garden, a garden in Manhattan. Park. There's souls in my hometown you want to reach. Oh God, use me where you have me. I'll be a garden in Manhattan, be a river where it's dry. When my friends can't find the road, I'll be a roadside welcome. Sunshine in Seattle. 
garden, a garden in Manhattan. Thank you, Allison. I love that. A garden in Manhattan and light to the world. We are his light. And without his light, we can't see Jesus. Hi. Hi, Josh. What you doing? Uh, Allison, come on back. You just thought you were finished. What? Oh. Well, uh, we kind of got surprised, but uh, Miss Allison is going to, she's been helping us for, what, two years? Right at two years or so with our children's church and Wednesday nights and all that. And she's been a very, very bl blessing to us and the kids. And uh, we're, we're going to miss her. She's just going to kind of take a break and, and step away and go concentrate on school, which is what she should do. <laughs> so... Uh, we're going we're gonna to let her have her break, but we hope she'll come back and help us out. We love you, Allison. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to say anything? No. Whoa! Y'all heard that, didn't you? Allison didn't want to say anything. No. No, okay, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> we do. We are so thankful. Allison is studying to be be a, a, a teacher, and we need teachers like Allison, and we need more light in our classrooms, don't we? So let's stand and let's sing just a few more songs together. Yeah. 
faithful to us even though we fail from time to time you always stay with us you're always faithful to us and I thank you for that no matter what happens no matter how bad it seems you'll forgive us let us start all over you'll help wash our lives and get right with you because you love us that much. That's faithfulness, and we're thankful for it. Jesus never fails. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.
we have to roam for we finally made it home sun will bring my children home for I want them gathered around my throne it's time to So, sun go bring my children home. It's time to reap the harvest you have sown. Sun go bring my children home. Sun go bring my children. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that time could be real soon, don't you? Amen. Our dear friends, the Neelands, sang these songs. Sing it with us, would you? Silver and gold, well, they are much. But if I have to choose, I'll choose his touch. For without it, I am sure I'd die. So if I had to choose, this is what I'd cry. Oh, I choose the Lord, He's the one I love, yeah, ten thousand fair ones, He's the fairest of How many believe it? I choose the Lord, He's my everything, and to beat it all, He's the King of kings. Say what you want, he is the best around. Well, you can search the world, but I've already found. Well, that is more than gold could ever buy. So if I have to choose, this is what I'd cry. He's the one I love. Amen. Ten thousand fair ones. He's the fairest son. I choose the Lord. He's my everything. And to beat it all. He's the king of kings. I choose the Lord. Oh. Lord, He's my everything, and to beat it all, He's the King of Kings, I choose the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Amen, amen. Well, you may or may not know it, but I'm sure you do if you're on Facebook because that's about all that was on there. But the Neelands have been up here on the stage many times, and they had become dear friends of ours. In fact, we, Susie, you may know, was supposedly going to take me on a trip. <laughs> and that was one of our first or second stops was going to be at their house in Georgia. And even uh, the day before they took their plane flight, Kelly had said, 
you need to go with us, Susie, sometime, if not this time. And so they went on the plane, cra- they went on the plane and it crashed, and they all died. Autumn, their youngest daughter, was not on there, and their grandbaby. We're very thankful for that. It's a tragedy, but I'll tell you what, uh, we don't know when our time is here. And uh, there's a lot of positives when it comes to trusting the name of Jesus because you know if something happens, where are you going to go? How many can say, if I die today, I know for an absolute fact that Jesus would take me in to his heaven? Amen. If you're not sure about that in your life, please don't leave here today until you've prayed about it and have a peace in your heart so that when you speak the name of Jesus, it brings something that nothing else can, a peace that passes all understanding. What is it that we do when our world comes crashing in? Life is hard, it seems, and there is no end. When our heart is torn, our faith is worn, and friends are hard. We speak your name, O oh precious Lord. You bring us peace of mind. We speak your name. We speak your, your name. name. In times of joy. In times We speak your name, we speak your name, in sunshine or rain, we speak your name. The doctor gives no hope, you've done all you can do. Are hard and money short, and all the bills are due. When your strength is gone, the days seem long, you feel like giving in. Just speak the name of our God, you'll find Your name, oh Jesus, we speak your name in times of joy, oh in times of pain, we speak your name, we speak your name. Lord, we speak your name. My rock, my shield, my hiding place. Oh, my boundless door of grace. My Lord, my life, my way, my end. My Savior and my friend. We speak your name. We 
speak your name in times of joy in times of pain we speak your name we speak your name in sunshine or rain Lord we speak your name in sunshine or rain oh Jesus we speak your name and praise the Lord some of y'all might know this chorus watch ye therefore you know not the day when the Lord shall call your soul away if you're Striving, fighting for the right, we shall wear a robe and crown. Sing it now. Watch ye, therefore, you know not the day when the Lord shall call your soul away. If you're striving, fighting for the right, you shall wear a robe and crown. I'm going to wear a crown. Oh, in the trumpet sound. When the sounds, oh, in the trumpet sounds, when the trumpet sounds, I'm going to wear a crown. I'm going to wear a crown. going to wear a crown. Oh, and as soon as my feet strike Zion, I'll lay down my heavy burden. going to put on my robe in glory and shout and tell him that story. We shall wear a robe and crown. Well, I'm going to wear a crown. Oh, in the trumpet sounds. I'm going to wear a crown Oh, when the trumpet sounds Well, I'm going to wear a crown I'm going to wear a crown Just as soon as my feet strike Zion, I'll lay down my heavy burden Going to put on the robe in glory And shout and tell them my story We shall wear a robe and crown Well, we shall wear a robe and crown Amen. Well, I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter 6. And uh, we're going to read some scripture, the red, the red words, the red letters, the words of Jesus. I like to hear those. So glad Carrie is back in church with us today. The Lord is healing her body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad to have you here today. If you're uh, here all the time, that's great. If you're visiting, thank you for coming to church with us. We were singing Neelan's songs this morning because they've passed away. They've been a part of my life, I guess the Neelan's music, pretty much all my life. And uh, the We Shall Wear a Robe and Crown is probably one of their most all-time recognizable songs from way back in our childhood. And Karen Peck sang it, and a lot of people have sang it. But we're going to wear a robe and a crown. Are you? Are you going to wear a robe and crown? Amen? How many's going to wear a robe and crown? Let me hear you now. The Bible says that Jesus is going to take our old filthy life and put his robe of righteousness on us, right? And forgive us and wash our sins away. And a crown of life shall be given unto you. And the Bible says that the road is narrow and the gate is small. And few there be that find it. But I found it. How about you? I have found it. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Follow Jesus. Go through him. You cannot go wrong if you go through him. And we don't know how we're going to leave this world. It could be a slow the uh, death of disease even possibly that happens even happens to God's children and I don't really understand why uh, but sometimes it happens suddenly maybe it's an auto accident or a plane crash or a sudden heart attack or something like that but I know 
uh, I've had a lot of questions about what happened this week in a lot of things. I've had questions from people about, you know, how can uh, people at the Olympics dishonor Jesus and God and the Bible so much? I've had questions about how can we uh, see our country turning so immoral so fast when it used to not be quite as bad as it is now. I've had questions about this week about what is it about the Word of God that makes you think you're right and other religions are wrong? And I would urge you, uh, don't fall into that trap. Don't fall into that trap. Because the truth of the matter is, there's no one in this room who can totally explain God's plan. Why did the Lord allow the Neelands to fall uh, at a very high rate of speed? Uh, their engine went out. And they were trying to glide, and all of a sudden another part went out, and they began to spiral out of control, falling thousands of feet per second. And it happened instantly. And part of me thinks, oh, you know, I just can't even imagine what the last few seconds of their life was. But then another part of me says, Lord, if I have to go, please let me go quick like that, doing what I love going where you have called me to go. If I have to go, please let me go suddenly when I'm headed to preach or headed to sing or maybe going to Falls Creek or going to the Passion Play or something that God you've called me to do and led me to do. If you want to call me home, do it that way so that I don't have to linger and suffer so that I can just wake up one second I'm headed where you want me to be, and the next second, I'm seeing your face in heaven. And so, we as Christians can look at things that way, and fact is, lost people cannot. We should not expect people in France that there are a lot of Christians in France, but we shouldn't expect the lost people in France or the lost people in Ada, Oklahoma, to behave like Christian people, and we should not expect them to honor God. Now, if they dishonor God, some of us are going to say something about it. And there's nothing wrong with that, and we need to stop letting people make us feel guilty for standing up for Jesus Christ. Can I say that again? We need to stop letting people make us feel guilty for standing up for Jesus Christ. And we are being manipulated. I promise you, the, the Neelands were going to Alaska to stand up for Jesus Christ. They were on a little plane with their friends. It's a terrible tragedy. Probably the greatest tragedy in gospel music history. All at one time. But when they woke up, they were right where they have been singing about all this time. And they're wearing a robe and crown. And their feet have landed in Zion. And one day, God's heavenly city will come down to earth. And we'll be part of it. And guys, the truth of the matter is, this is not hate when we say, atheists will not be part of it. Buddhists, Hindus, people that live a lifestyle opposite of God, will not be part of it. We don't want them to miss it. We don't want them to miss it. We want to share with them that God loves them. Those people on that satanic, demonic stage at the Olympics, God loves every one of their souls. And he wants them to wake up to the truth that Jesus is the way. But in that, that being said, we still need to stand for Jesus, family, faith, freedom, the Bible, and we need to have our families in church. America has made a big mistake not keeping church attendance as a high priority across our entire culture. That has been a major mistake. There are even some foolish preachers who will tell you 
that it's not about church attendance. Well, I'll tell you what it's about. It's about knowing Jesus, loving him, following him. And if you do, if your heart is true, you will want to be in his church. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 6, the words of Jesus in verse 27, he said, I say unto you that will hear me, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. That's hard to do. It's very difficult to do that. Sometimes people hate us, and we hate them back. But the best thing, Jesus says, is to show kindness to them. Very difficult in some cases. He goes on to say, bless those that curse you. You know, one of the greatest things you can do if somebody is really cursing you and giving you a hard time and trying to ruin your life is to do something nice for them. The Bible, Jesus goes on later to say that it will heap coals of fire on their head. It's the best type of revenge is to be overly kind to someone who's being nothing but mean to you. That is hard to do. And it's hard for this preacher to do, and I frankly don't know very many who are very good at that. But it's something we should practice and try and strive for. I'm talking to myself as much as you. Now, when there's someone makes a public stance, that is a whole different ball game. Influencing public policy, influence public decision, official policy, official decision. That is a whole different ball game. We are not to sit back and be quiet. And when someone stands against that, we're not to put them down and talk bad about them. We're to get behind them and give them strength and hold them up. When Moses went to fight because God told him to fight, he had to have help holding that staff up because his arms got tired. And so there's a difference. You see what I'm trying to say? Someone takes a stand, public policy, public stance, public speech, and someone else counters that and brings Jesus up in the cross and lifts up the Lord instead. We should support them. But when it comes to one-on-one -on -one individual interaction, we're supposed to show the love of Jesus. And that's hard to do sometimes. The Bible says in verse 30, Jesus said, verse 29, unto him that smiteth thee, now this is really tough, unto him that hits you on one cheek, offer the other. Sometimes it depends on how big the other guy is. But the Bible's trying to say, if somebody does you wrong, sometimes it's better just not to react. You know that there are a lot of people in prison because they reacted a certain way. There's a lot of people that wish they could go back and react a different way. There's a lot of marriages that have broken up because someone reacted a certain way. A lot of children that are estranged from their families because of the way someone reacted. As a Christian, the way we react is very critical. And it's and this isn't the preacher standing up here saying, do like I do. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I need to work on how I react one-on-one -on -one to people. And I think a lot of us do. We need to work on how we react. Because when you're a Christian, they can spit in your face and cuss you out and call you everything under the sun. But when you react, they will use it against you no matter what they did to provoke it. And that is a trap that the old devil lays. He lays that trap to try to get us to react out of character.
it goes on to say, give every man that asks of him. Give every man that asks of thee. That's hard to do, let me tell you. Especially driving through the metro and there's one on every corner. And the way I see that is standing on the corner and holding up a sign is not necessarily asking of me. And I'm not saying you should never give to those people. I've known there have been times where I felt like God wanted me to stop and give that person something. But there have been other times where I didn't think so. And so these are all not so cut and dry, are they? They're not sometimes so cut and dry. But he says, give to everyone that asks you. If somebody comes to you and asks you, he may ask you for something you cannot give. It doesn't say give to everyone what they ask of you, does it? It says give to everyone who asks of you. Maybe all you have is a loaf of bread. Maybe all you have is a box of food. Maybe all you have is a can of vegetables. Maybe you have a dollar. Maybe you have five dollars. The longer I live, the more I'm amazed at people that are offended when you ask. And when I was a kid, I know way back when, some of y'all are older than I am, it wasn't so offensive. If somebody asked, it wasn't like we got offended. I mean, we may not be able to do it. But nowadays, it seems like People are so offended by everything. And I'll tell you, Jesus said, if somebody asks, if someone comes to you and asks, give them something. And I try to do that. Sometimes I don't have much left after all the asking. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'll confess, sometimes I see them coming. I go, whoop. But when we want to be like Jesus, we have to start practicing the things Jesus did. And this is hard to do, but it's not impossible. Don't lash out against the person that's standing up for Jesus. That is the wrong side to choose. Jesus said, you're either for me or against me. Yet give to those that ask. What you can. You may not have much to give. You might just have, here's what Paul and Silas said. Silver and gold we do not have. But we will give you what we do have. And they prayed for the person and blessed the person. And God worked in their life. But then Jesus told another story that seems contradictory, but it isn't. He said, the hungry come to you, and you just want to pray for them and send them away hungry. Don't do that. Those are not contradictory. What the Bible is teaching is every situation is different. And the Holy Spirit will lead you. Do you have the Holy Spirit in your life? Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Are you baptized, immersed in the Spirit of Jesus Christ? The Holy Spirit, God Himself, set on fire in your life. He goes on to say, Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, Ask them not again. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask him, do not ask him to give it back. That's what that means. That's really tough. You know, there's a little house I grew up in. My mother and I were there yesterday looking to see what they stole this week. And, uh, I know who's doing it. They live right up the road. I know where they live. I know exactly who it is. I've been told by a few different people who it was. 
And it's all I can do not to go knock on their door. But I'm afraid I might overreact, if you know what I mean. And sometimes it's better not to react at all. That's a hard one for me, guys. That's tough for me. If you love them, it says, uh, pardon me, verse 31, And as you would that men do unto you, do also unto them. That's the golden rule, right? That's what we call the golden rule. If you want someone to treat you a certain way, treat them a certain way. Well, there's some people, guys, let's face it, there's some people you cannot treat nice because they ain't never going to be nice at all. But you can try. And after you try a time or two, you see it's not working. You have to walk away from those people. There are people in your life, sometimes throughout your life, there are people that you just simply have to stay away from because they just keep pulling you in and pulling you down and getting you back off track. That's, a, that's real for all of us. But the general rule is if you want to wonder how to treat someone, treat them the way you want them to treat you. If you want somebody to be nice to you, be nice to them. If you do good unto them, which do only that do good unto you, then what thank have you? What, what blessing do you have? Even sinners do that. I skip to verse 32. It says, love the sinners because even sinners like to be loved. And that's true, isn't it? Sometimes you can reach somebody. Maybe they're really way off track in life. And maybe you can bring them a cake or a pie or give them a hug. Or what, How can I pray for you today? How can I pray for you today? That's one of the best things. How can I pray for you today? Hardly anyone is ever offended by that. There's a few, but not very many. How can I pray for you today? If you do good to them, which do good to you, only to do good to you, then how have you blessed them? For sinners even do that. If it, and if you lend to them only to receive a profit, in other words, then what thank have you? In other words, your blessing is the profit. If, if you lend, and there's nothing wrong with lending someone to make money, but if you do that, that's not a blessing. That's a profit. A blessing is when you help someone without anything in return. And so it says, verse 35, But love you your enemies and do good unto them. Lend hoping for nothing again. Your reward shall be great. There's times, this is talking about times, situational instances in your life where there may be someone that has been your enemy in the past and you may have a chance to give something to them and win them over. And you're not expecting a profit from it. You just want to do good to them. And that's the way it, it can happen. It can happen. Has anybody ever had that happen? Where you have somebody that they really, man, they've been your enemy, but all of a sudden you got a chance to do something good for them, give them something, and, and you may feel good, don't you? I mean, you walk off thinking, wow, I feel good. I loan that dirty, rotten, you know, I mean, you feel good about helping somebody because you wanted to, not because you had to, or not because it was profitable unto you. And God wants you to feel good about how you treat others. Amen? God wants you to feel good about how you treat other people. Jesus Christ did everything for us. Jesus Christ ultimately sacrificed his life. Not only that, but his pain. I think about, you know, when I, 
I'm, I, maybe I shouldn't keep bringing it up, but this deal with the Neelands has really, really bothered me a lot. But I think, how much worse was it for Jesus? How much worse was it for Jesus? Because he knew what was about to happen, and it went on for hours. The pain, the horrific torture of the cross went on for hours and hours, not just seconds or minutes. And he chose that so that his blood could be the sacrifice that his father would honor to forgive the sins of all who would accept it. What a great message Jesus had in the Beatitudes. And I'm going to close with verse 38. If you give generously, it will be given unto you generously. Now, there's a prosperity gospel going around, and they take that scripture, and that's all they preach. And they try to get people to be motivated to give because you're going to get more back than you gave. Now, I think if we read this whole passage, which we just did, it's pretty clear that's not the message that Jesus was trying to teach. He was trying to teach people how to treat others. You see, it's already a given that we're supposed to tithe. It's already a given that we're supposed to give to the Lord. That's a given. Those things are just part of being a Christian. And it's, okay, it's fun, it's enjoyable to give to the Lord. But we don't do it so that we can get a profit back from the Lord. If I give a quarter, I'm expecting God to give me a dollar. No, he might, and he has never failed me yet. Amen? But that's not the motivation for giving that we have. We give because Jesus taught us to give. He taught us to follow him and love others, even when it's hard to do. And this morning, I'm going to ask the ordained deacons and pastors to come forward, and we're going to share the Lord's Supper. And we're going to take the juice and the unleavened bread, and we're going to take that together. Everybody is welcome to do that. You're all welcome to take this with us. We're remembering the sacrifice Jesus made, and we need to also remember the lessons that he taught and what he gave to us. We can never give back. I can never give enough back to Jesus for what he's given me. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name that you'll bless this, your last supper. I pray, God, that you'll take this blessed bread and blessed juice and that we'll know exactly how powerful it is in our lives because it represents you, the most important thing of all, your blood and your body, your sacrifice for all that you did for us. We ask you to bless it and anoint it. In Jesus' name, amen. Neither the juice or the bread have any yeast in it. And the reason we do that is because throughout the Bible, yeast represented sin. It was stated that a little bit of yeast will spread throughout the whole loaf. And that's true, that what makes a loaf of bread rise. And a little bit of sin in your life can just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's best to let the Lord help you get rid of all of it. That's the lesson. The pure body, Jesus was the only human being that never sinned. There's never been a man or woman without sin. And so we drink the 
fruit of the vine and the bread with no yeast. To represent the pure, sinless blood and body of Jesus Christ. Every year they celebrated Passover and they ate flat bread and drank and ate other foods as well. And Jesus said, as often as you do this, remember what I did for you. So he was talking about every year at Passover, when you take the Passover, remember what I did for you. So here at Union Valley, we don't just do it once a year like Jesus instructed. We go ahead and take it three or four times a year together so that everyone has a chance to be here on any given Sunday and take it as a remembrance of what Jesus did for us. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Yesterday, I visited a church in the little community where I grew up, and they were closing their doors. I had been inside that church many times in my life, because a lot of my friends in school went to that church, and they would invite me. And I went several times, not on usually on Sunday mornings, but to school, you know special classes or special singings and things. And I thought how sad it was that that church has closed their doors. They've donated their building and property to the school. But there are three or four ladies that I've known my whole life that were there till the end trying to keep it open. And I think how sad it is that so many places... I've heard recently, I'm not sure what the statistic is, but I've heard that it's over 4,000 churches that have closed in the last two years, three years. And I've thought about excuses why people don't go to church. And the Lord, the, the Lord hears them all the time, and the devil provides as many as you want. One of the things I hear a lot is, well, I just don't get fed anymore. And I, I think, I think, well, if you'd show up more than once a month, you might get fed. Or I just don't get blessed like I used to. And I remember what my daddy always said, that person that's always talking about not getting blessed probably gives a dollar a week. So the hard truth is, you get out of it what you put into it. And the reminder today is, Jesus gave it all. That's the example that he set. And so I would ask you to think about that as you take the bread and the fruit of the vine, the blood of Jesus. No, we do not believe that that is spiritually transformed into the actual blood of Jesus. It's a representation of the pure, sinless blood of the one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. Would you stand with me? 
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. We're going to pray and be dismissed. Thank you for being here today. I hope you'll come back. I have a trailer load of things from that church I'm talking about. They wanted me to have it. Some beautiful oak pews, about three or four. They're not he- not all that heavy. And a few other things. I sure would like some help getting those out before you, if you can. If you can't, that's okay. But if you're able, I'd like to get a little help getting those things out of the trailer. And I'm thankful to have a few things from that church in our hometown, the Methodist, Schulter Methodist Church. And I'm thankful there's still people standing for Jesus in our day. Lord, I pray that you'll bless each one that chose to be here today. Lord, I pray that you will move in our hearts to show us what we can do to better serve you. That we'll follow your guidelines in the Beatitudes. And that we will desire to be blessed of thee. In Jesus' name, amen.